Now, while the pandemic is still ravaging many parts of the world, life is gradually returning to normal in Wuhan. The Chinese city is where the COVID-19 outbreak was first reported. Eight months on, streets are bustling and children are returning to school. Wuhan accounted for 80% of China's coronavirus deaths, but no new local infections have been reported in more than three months. The Net Lim, our correspondent, is at ground zero on a trip organized by the Chinese government. Uh, Lynette, uh, from what you've observed, what does Ground Zero look like today? You know, Jill, I'm hard-pressed to detect any signs that this was once, you know, the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, people are relaxed, they're strolling on the streets, the roads are busy with cars. Uh, many people on the streets outdoors are choosing not to wear masks uh, and only putting on their masks uh, as is still a requirement in many places indoors. Uh, today we visited the Tongqi, Univ- uh, the Tongqi Hospital, I beg your pardon, and this was described by officials as one of the key battlegrounds uh, during the COVID-19 fight in Wuhan. Uh, that was where uh, you know, they had to expand the floor space of their fever clinics by 50% at the peak of the crisis. Uh, the hospital's deputy director told us that there were moments where he felt nervous and where he felt stressed due to the lack of uh, medical supplies. But he also said that, you know, the situation turned around fairly quickly um, and he attributes it to China having a strong leader like President Xi Jinping. He said that they were able to immediately mobilize manpower from all over the country, centralize resources and devote it to Wuhan. We also visited a famous tourist spot, the Yellow Crane Tower, and there we saw many people out and about families enjoying their time. And this is important because the Hubei government actually designated the Yellow Crane Tower along with 400 uh, other tourist sites uh, to be free of charge for domestic tourists. And this is really a bid uh, to try and revive the tourism and the local economy that had been so badly ravaged by the virus. Uh, Lynette, tell us a bit more about this uh, trip then that has led you there. It's a government-organized trip uh, for the media, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so these trips are a fairly common diplomatic tool uh, that the Foreign Affairs Ministry uses to invite foreign media and also uh, foreign representatives of business chambers and business associations. Uh, they see this as an important part of countering what they believe um, is, you know, biased narratives emanating from largely Western media, biased narratives that they say have uh, over overly focused or excessively focused on, you know, the alleged uh, suppression of reporting of information in the early days of the outbreak or the excessively excessively focus on uh, the initial missteps um, or the initial uh, bungling by certain local government officials. Uh, They feel this is an opportunity for them to uh, put out their narrative. Of course, on trips like these, it is quite tightly chaperoned, it is quite tightly scripted, but it is an opportunity for us to gain a window into what China is thinking. And here we see that, you know, they're keenly trying to portray Wuhan as a story of success, as a story of recovery. We do see evidence of this. Uh, We also see that uh, many people um, are out and about. We see um, evidence that, you know, the, the harsh but draconian control measures that involve a two and a half month lockdown have been effective so far. Back to you. All right, Mayor, thanks for that. And let Lim uh, reporting live from Wuhan, and we'll have more reports over the coming days uh, right here on CNA.